There's a little bit more about conveyors and that more is the network port. So what does the network port do? It connects different conveyors that are in different places uh, together in order to make them be in the same network. So that's obviously not easy to understand when I say it. So let's create two new conveyors, very simple. And let's create a very simple model. And let's say that we want to move the, the items from this conveyor with the destination, this conveyor. This is obviously not possible because these conveyors are in different networks. And if we run the model, you will get an error because the path is not found. Obviously, it's not found because the conveyors are in different networks. But we can use the network port in order to connect these two conveyors and make them become one network. To do that, you can choose either of these and define a port that is paired to that one. So that port is paired to this one. And that's it. This one, will you will see that it's not paired to anyone, but in fact, it is paired with this one. You can choose to define uh, anywhere which one is paired with the other one, even if you see that the other one is not paired with the previous one. So in other words, I can put this as known and this one as paired with this one, and it will be the same thing. So when I run the model, you can actually see the, the items moving from one place to the other. So when you don't use any material item, you will see these colorful uh, squares that will go through your network. And that's because we're using the default agent. But the question is, why would we want to teleport boxes or items from one conveyor to the next? And the answer is agents. And I will show you right now what that means. You can have an agent, a population of agents. Let's put none as the animation for now and finish this. We'll have, for example, uh, maybe two or three, three agents. And if we go to the agent to define how it was, it's going to be, let's change this to the same scale, which is one meter equal 30 pixels, 30 pixels per meter. And let's generate a conveyor here. Now, if we go back to main, you won't see anything because we didn't define the animation. To define it again, to show it in the presentation, we can use this. Now, let's move this to somewhere around here. Now, I'm putting the agent near the conveyor, but I'm not connecting the two conveyors together anyways. And all these conveyors are around one meter long, 30 pixels. So we have space for maybe uh, one, two, two more conveyors if we make this a little bit closer and move this. So these agents will be located in each one of these spaces that I left for conveyors. So we, let's place uh, the agent in the specified point, which will be um, y equal to 100. So let's put that immediately z will be equal to zero. We're not going to use uh, three dimensions. And x will be 50 plus 150. So that will be 200. So the x will be 200 plus the index of the agent multiplied by 150. Of course, if we run the model, you will see the whole conveyor, but the boxes or items will still be teleported from here to here because we haven't defined anything to do with the conveyors that are in between. So let's do that now. These conveyors will need to be connected uh, through teleportation with the networks. So let's add network, uh, network port here. Let's call it input and let's put an agent port here. Let's call it output. Now we will need a function here to define which network is connected with what. So get network. So let's call this get node. It will return an other, which is a network port. 
So if get index equals zero, which means it's the first agent, it will return network port and else it will return the output of the previous agent. So main dot my agent get index minus one. This is the previous agent dot output, which is network port of the previous agent. And finally, in our main here, we need to define here which port is going to be connected with this one. It's not going to be the one we chose before. It's going to be instead my agent output. So this is the, the, the port network of the last agent that we created because we have three agents or you can you can be more sp specific and put here dot size minus one if you want to create many more agents here in the convey nothing changes what i missed here is that i defined the function but i didn't use the function so i will use it here in order to define which port this is connected to or co or paired to, with so now we can run the model and you will see that everything is nicely moving but the only problem that we have here is that there's something wrong going on here right so you can see that there's something weird here and this is because the conveyors have diff or the agents are placed in different orders in the two dimensional plane normally you can do just uh, go to order and bring to front but here we can't really control that and that means that the first agent created will be over the next agents. So this is kind of annoying in terms of visualization. You won't see this as a problem when you build your 3D simulations, but it is a problem when it's a 2D visualization. So what can you do about it? I'm not sure if it's possible really. So the only way I know how to solve this problem is to reverse the way in which the, uh, the conveyors are defined. So the first conveyor will be created here, then the second here, and the third in the position of what is now the first. So what is the difference? First, this one, which is connected normally to the previous agent, is going to be now connected to the next uh, output network, to the output network of the next agent. And if get index equals two, which is the size of the population, then it will connect. It will be connected to the uh, first network port. And we need to change this here as well. This one will be connected to the first agent. And finally, we need to change the positions of these things. So instead of index, it will be two minus index here. So if you're confused, you need to check uh, carefully the video again and see what I'm doing. I'm just changing the order in which the agents or conveyors are positioned. That's it. So let's run the model and you will see now that everything is smooth and nice. So this is a solution. I don't know if there's another solution to, to solve this problem, but this is what I do.